Hey there, Jellyman here. In this video, we're going to do something called the 200 day moving average. And I got a lot of questions about how moving average actually works, what it's doing, when do you use it, right? And so I think a lot of people just get confused with what it's actually for. Simply put, if you have some sort of signal, right? And the signal can be stock price, can be your sales, whatever it is. And by signal, I guess I mean, you know, you have some sort of chart, you have time here, and you have some sort of measure, right? What you'll usually find is in a lot of these charts, it's very, very busy, right? It's very volatile. So I've actually got an example here. So if I just use the Superstore data, right? And I've got, let's say, order date. And I think I've, I've done this several times, so people probably will notice it, right? So let's say we switch this to maybe weekly, okay? So if I was to ask you, is it going up or down? It's very hard to tell. And the reason is because you've got all these different little spikes and big ones and little ones. So one thing we do is what's called a moving average to smooth out the data. And that gets rid of any of your really big spikes and looks at the long-term underlying trend, right? If I was just to eyeball this just from experience, if I was to say what the trend is, it's probably going to look something like that. But that's just a visual guess. How do we calculate this mathematically? So I'm not going to explain it yet. I'm just going to show you quickly, and then we'll go to how you would do it. So let's say I've got a moving average here, and I'm just going to extend this to maybe, I don't know, 100. Oh, did I extend that too far? Uh, yeah, 100 will do. And let's dual access this. Right. So you can see it's very similar to that line that I drew before. Right? So you can see it's kind of, from comparing the two, now you can see that, oh, the red's actually going up a bit. Great. you know, And that's kind of how you would use it. So in stocks, right, this particular technique called the 200-day moving average, it's kind of a signal when the stock is about to turn. right? It's about to drop. Right? So let me show you an example. If I go to the S&P 500 on Yahoo Finance, right? we go in here, and... S&P 500, without getting into too much details, it's really just a huge measure of the state of the economy um, in the US. So 500 meaning if you invested in the 500 largest companies in the US, right? This is kind of a measure. So if all of them started um, like really struggling, then the whole thing drops. If they all start being profitable, then the whole thing goes up and it all kind of averages itself out, okay? So if I go like the last year, right? This was when COVID happened. So you can see that it dropped, right? And then it kind of started climbing again. So what would be interesting is to know, like, was it like just a small drop or is it a big drop that's coming, right? So if I go five year, I mean, we don't, we want to avoid these little ones, like in terms of buying or selling, because you're like, well, maybe I'm buying on a high or am I buying on a low? And this little, this technique helps you kind of decide that. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. We're going to need some data. So you can kind of do what I did, which is S&P 500, right? Go to Yahoo Finance, and we're going to go historical data. And we're just going to download the latest information. So I'm going to go here, and maybe we'll set this to, um, let's just go max, right? I'll set it for the max period. Uh, I think I pressed something wrong there. Let's try that again. Max, right? So 1927. Historical, daily, and apply. All right, so that dot is refreshed, and let's go ahead and download using this button. All right, and now we have that information. We're going to drag that into Tableau. So let me just do a fresh one. Okay, let's get rid of all this. Okay, let's grab that. And I can actually just grab this straight from here as a little treat. I think I said treat. I actually just fed the dogs. Um, okay, sheet one. And now we have our data. And the one we're really interested in is close, which is the stock price. So if I grab the stock price in rows and we do a date continuous flow, that's the stock market, right? Since 1927. We're gonna put a filter for the date so we don't have to look at like a really long range, All right? Just go okay. I'm going to show this filter, and I like to put it up here, actually, just so it's a bit longer, gives me more control. And let's go all the way to 1995, 
right? So the reason I like to go 95, actually 95, 97 is good, you know, is because this was, you know, the, the, um, the tech bubble in the year 2000. This was the global financial crisis. And this one right here is COVID, right? So it kind of gives me some kind of world events. All right. How do we put the moving average? And I'm going to show you a few options you can do with this. The easiest way I found is if you just duplicate this one first, right? So we'll hold control, duplicate, all right? So now I've got two of the same thing. We're going to right click, quick table, and moving average, right? So you can see it didn't change by very much. And that's because it's usually set to just two days. Right now, because this is such a long period of time, we need something longer than two days. So what we can do is we can either double click and change this to, let's say, 200 days. Right. So minus means it's going backwards. Right. In the formulation. And actually, maybe in Excel, I will show you what that means. So let's go in. Uh, let's go downloads. Okay, so I'll show you what like a forward moving average is and a trailing moving average so you can see the difference and why we only really use trailing. Okay, so let's just get all this sorted. All right. Okay, so I have some data here. Let's get rid of all this extra stuff just to have less things for eyes to look at. Okay, so let's say this is, each of these is a day. And if I want to do a five-day moving average, right so i'll start on the fifth day and i go average right? average and i take the last five days okay all right so that gives me the average of this one now if i do the same thing for the next one it takes the next five and the next five and the next five and if i go into this view actually you'll be able to see it actually moving you can see how the average is moving hence it's called moving average and if this is time, right, this is the earliest time and it's going this way, right, if we're using data going backwards, it means it's a trailing moving average. We're using it going backwards. But you can also do a moving average going the other way. So let's get rid of this. We can go average, right, and we can go forward. You can see how it's going forward in time, All right? So same thing. So if I come in here, see how it's going forward. Now, why would you why wouldn't you use a forward moving average for stocks? Well, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we can't use tomorrow to predict today. So theory logically it just doesn't make any sense. So we always do going backwards. Now, what does it mean going 5 days or 10 days or 100 days? Well, let me demonstrate what the difference is. And the best way is to actually overlay these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, and actually, to do that easier, what I'm going to show you is a parameter so we can control how many days it is, like, um, so you can adjust that really easily. So what you can do is once you've already applied the moving average, you can actually grab this, hold control, and drop it in here. And what that will do is that will actually create a formula based on what you had done. So let's call this moving average. Right, and we're going to add a parameter. We're going to go create parameter, and let's call this MA. And very important, this has to be set to integer. Right, and the reason is because the moving average calculation in here, you need a integer as the input. All right, so make sure you set that to integer. And we don't want to have to adjust one, two, three, you know, so we're going to do a range. Let's go starting at 50 days all the way up to 500 days so like a year and a half and maybe even let's let's go all the way to a thousand right and we're going to do steps of 50 so it was 50 100 150 200 right like so and go okay right and then in this moving average calculation we're going to modify this to take that ma in here okay so we're going to replace the two with ma right now set what i said before was you need the minus so the minus this part signifies going backwards, right? So this is your trailing. If I wanted to do a moving at an MA, like going forward, I would make this zero and make this positive MA. So that's now a leading kind of forward moving average. But again, we, we don't want that. So we'll set that to zero and make this minus. So going backwards, MA. All right, so we go OK. We can get rid of this one, replace it with this one now, all right? 
and we can bring this parameter in. So we're going to go show parameter so we can see it here now. So you can see here on this bottom, if we adjust this, you see how it's changing itself. That is much easier than <laughs> going in here and change, oh, well, sorry, going into this one and changing the value every time, which, which can get annoying if you're doing an, an investigation or an, anal or an analysis, right? So let's set this back to 50, right? So 50 days. What we're going to do is we're going to dual access this, like so. I'm actually going to move these ones all the way here, okay? And you see that they don't really overlap, but they should, and that's because of the axes. So let's make sure that's synchronized. Okay, so now they're overlapped correctly. You can kind of tell that a moving average is on the right track if it actually overlays on the data behind it relatively closely. If it's kind of really high above, it just mathematically doesn't happen that way unless you obviously have massive spikes uh, in your data which throw off your average. Yeah? So just make sure you always got your synchronize. So if you ever notice that, oh, my data's... My results aren't coming right, just check your synchronize. Okay, so we got that. And now that these two are the exact same figure, we don't really need one, and we'll do that. The other thing I like to do is the blue line in the back is the stock, the orange is the moving average. So I like to make this like reduce its opacity a little bit, right? So we can see the part in the front. Great. Now, a 50 day moving average is a bit too short. We're actually interested in 200. And before we do that, let's zoom in to about 20, yeah, 2016 ish, right? And what we're also going to do, we're gonna go edit access and we're gonna turn this include zero. And that just basically means um, instead of it starting at zero, right? Where we have all this kind of wasted space, it'll start probably at 2000 where your dot, where your data starts. Right? So it just stretches my data as you can see, I'll move this to the side. Right, so you can see it stretches. It just gives me much more visibility on what's actually happening. Okay, now let's set this to a 200 day. And what I'm really interested in seeing is this one. Right, basically, could I have predicted that the market was really going to keep going and that this would have been a buying opportunity for me to be like, oh, buy it when it's really low and then kind of ride it up to recovery. Okay, so if we move this to 200, all right. 200. So you can see it's actually crossed it a few times. So as the stock is actually above it, it's actually okay. It means everything's kind of going upwards. But as soon as it crosses, for example, there or there, right, it's, it may be a signal, right, that things are about to switch. They're about to turn. So with people talking about, you know, a second crash coming, I'd be looking at this part. You can see it's still well above it. So maybe not for a while, but that is quite a drop. Once it approaches here, right, actually, I'll probably, let me get rid of all these <laughs> drawing. Let's zoom in a bit, right? Once it starts approaching this orange line, this moving average, right? Let's say it goes da 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 bang, hits it. I'll, I got to make sure that, you know, I've got funds or, you know, getting all my assets or portfolios, whatever, sort of that if it keeps going all the way here, you know, I can be like, ooh, it's a time to buy, right? And then that's kind of how I'd make my money. All right, so that's how you would do your moving average with a parameter control, and I think that is pretty much it. So I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this because people have been asking about finance analysis. So um, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and yeah, enjoy and see you next time.